I'm unboxing something, aren't I? Oh, yeah. Double the boxes, double the fun. So we are not sure what is going on today. What I have two boxes, large or small. First. I don't know. Get the bigger one or the smaller one? Right, whatever. Go big or go home. Spell right! Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. It's Valorite. So okay. tell me about all the uh, okay. Wow! I've never seen this before. Holy guacamole. I have never seen rough. I don't think I've ever seen rough Valorite like this. That's pretty cool. I suspect. I don't know. Is that like mica or something in there? It looks like there's some quartz and there's some little, little, little pieces of Valorite. Okay, so here's what we need to do. Today you're gonna see something different. We're gonna have a little felt leather mat because sphalerite is super delicate. It has, um, I believe, six planes of cleavage. And cleavage direction, mean, or having a plane of cleavage means that if they're, you know, usually the molecules are like this. They're really, really, really tight. And you can hit this. Here, Bradley, hit my hand and try to break it. No, like, like karate chop my hand. See? Nothing. But if I was sphalerite, I'm kind of like very loosely, loosely. So Bradley, karate chop my hand. Boom. That is what happens on a cleavage plane. It just, really quick. It'll cleave in half and that's not good. And that's why sphalerite is so tough to cut because there's so many places that it can just cleave. And if that happens, then it's gonna be tough to have a piece of jewelry if you're worried about cutting it. So you have to be extremely talented to cut sphalerite. And it's just a very, very delicate stone. and. I love, love, love gemstones, and I don't want to hurt any of them. I want to be able be allowed to touch gemstones again on this unboxing show. Today, I cannot drop anything, even if it is hot. <laughs> Sorry, Snoop. Okay, so we've got two specimens right here. First of all, we have a mineral specimen, and you can see the spala right, right there. Those are rough stones, nothing's cut. While I've always loved having mineral specimens here on the show, you know, it's fascinating to see the crystal structure and, um, you know, the, the host rock, and this is a really cool piece. For Spalorite, I am gonna have to say that the winner of today's What One Is Cooler contest is by far the cut stone. You know, the, the six planes of cleavage, that means that every time this lap, the lapidary cut, he had to be careful because it was entirely conceivable that it was just gonna you know, cleave in two or three or... The fact that someone can cut Spalorite and be able to manipulate the material so you get a, a beautiful stone and sharp facets and everything, you know, to me looks really symmetrical and well proportioned. You know, that is not only a feat with any gemstone, that's a feat, it's a major feat with sphalerite because of how delicate it is. Usually the sphalerite that I'm more familiar with is like orange, yellow, or, you know, kind of a reddish orange. They're a little bit more warmer colors. So I was surprised to see two examples of green. And I'm actually really surprised to see a stone this big. I've seen some pretty big sphalerites over the course of my career but those are, you know, they're not that often. This looks like a normal mineral specimen. You're gonna see the host rock. You may see some other um, material around it. I mean, what is surprising is if you look at that sphalerite, you know, there's just a little pocket right there. How did you get, I'm gonna, I gotta be really careful today, guys. How did you get this stone from something that that, you know, there's a little pocket. So I suspect that wherever the stone was mined, there was, you know, a larger piece of rough. You know, I, I don't think you could just pull something that size out of, a pocket like this, which makes me think that this came out of, you know, a much larger size piece of, of rough. When gemstones are growing, it's basically like you're baking. I love to make pancakes, and you know, there's gonna be a set recipe for pancakes. Um, so it's kind of the same thing with gemology. So there is a set recipe for sphalerite, but some similar, you know, like in pancakes, to make waffles, you need flour too. You know, maybe, the flower of sphalerite, you need it for the host rock, or maybe that to me looks like it's quartz or something. So there's gonna be similarities and overlap with the recipe for each stone, and that is why you may see you know, some stones that are in pockets together. I suspect that the reason this this stone is this shape with this pattern of facets is that that was the best way for the lapidary to use the most amount of rough. A lot of the challenges that lapidaries have with rough stones is that they always they need to maximize the rough. So if you have five carats of rough, you're gonna try to get as much out of that as you can. You know, you don't wanna waste three carats um, because of poor planning. So I suspect that the shape and the way the facets are facets are placed is because that 
the lapidary just needed to maximize whatever piece he had. We're gonna leave most of the stones on the map today. Most of the cut sphalerite I've seen have been round or ovals. I haven't seen too many that were, you know, trillions. You gotta be careful with sphalerite. I would never set sphalerite in a ring just because it's so delicate. I think I have, you just gotta be really careful. I mean, I'm sure there are people that have set it in jewelry. I'm sure I've seen a piece of jewelry off the top of my head, I can't remember, but you know, I would never, ever, ever set that in a ring, ever. That like one that big? No, just like I would never set sphalerite in general in a ring. But you've all seen on this show, I tend to drop and knock things, so maybe that's just me. So something cool about sphalerite is that sphalerite is actually its own species. For example, corundum is the species name for sapphire and ruby. Sphalerite, that's its own species. Another really, really cool thing about sphalerite is that it actually has more dispersion than diamond. Let's say I have this gemstone and my hand is white light. So white light hits the stone and dispersion is that breaking up of that white light into spectral colors. And when that happens, you see more sparkles. So arguably, sphalerite is more beautiful than a diamond, not only because of the color, but obviously, you know, the dispersion. There's more dispersion than a diamond. But, you know, that's to each their own. It's what beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I'm beholding a beautiful sphalerite, and I think it's quite beautiful. Science. So I've always found the concept of luster to be a bit dull, but um, what's cool about sphalerite is that it has an adamantine um, luster, luster, adamantine means diamond-like. So a lot of the sphalerite I've seen comes from Spain. I know there's some that is mined in Bulgaria, but most of what I have dealt with at work is, is from Spain. For all you X-Men fans, uh, adamantine is different than adamantium. Sorry, Wolverine. My nails look better than yours. So luster is basically the way that light like reflects off of the face of a stone. Um, so for instance, metallic stones, you're gonna have that you know really like high, very reflective look. Um, one luster below metallic would be adamantine, and that's what sphalerite is. And others could be like vitreous. It's gonna kind of look like oily. I, when I think of vitreous luster, um, that would be like a tourmaline. When I think of a vitreous luster, I kind of think of the time that I spilled all of my olive oil on the floor and my floor looked kind of vitreous. All right, so I'm all alone today. No guest. I'm a little lonely here in my dark, lonely, dull studio. But hey, we're going to shake it up a bit and I'm going to bring in the book. But what's really cool today is I'm actually bringing in the second volume of the Systemology Reference, which you have never seen on this show. So everyone say hi to volume number two, volume number two. There's YouTube. Um, so this is volume two, this is Noteworthy Gems, and we're gonna look up Sphalerite. Sphalerite is definitely a noteworthy gem, so we're gonna go to page 130. Okay, this is a collector's stone. Um, and it's not, it's too soft for jewelry. These are the stones I was more familiar with. I told you like that kind of yellowish golden color and those orange for sphalerite and you know, kind of the reddish orange color coloring. If you want to learn more about gemology, this is definitely the way to do it. So today's sphalerite, you know, both of them are green, but not all sphalerite is green. Most of the sphalerite I've seen is yellow, you know, kind of a yellow goldenrod. Orange, I've seen like reddish orange. I've seen some a little bit, you know, deeper red. Um, so usually they're more warmer colors. That's what I've seen, but green does exist. Pause right here with sphalerite. We're gonna talk about the Mohs scale. So the Mohs scale is a one to 10. 10 is a diamond, one is like talc, and that's basically the, the hardness of the stone. So 10 is a diamond. I mean, with a diamond, you could, I could knock it on the table right now. I could drop it on the table and nothing is probably gonna happen. You know, diamonds may be, uh, you know, maybe rock and they may be very strong, but that doesn't mean they're indestructible, but they're less indestructible. Wait, they're more indestructible than a sphalerite. Sphalerite, um, you know, it's closer to talc, which means if I drop this stone on the table, which I'm not, I could really do some damage. You know, we're really lucky on the show today to have rough and cut. You can kind of see the before of the the rough piece, you know. there It is entirely feasible that someone could take this and mine those out. So I think it's really cool that you see kind of like the rough, the before, and then the beautiful cut stone with the great color as the after. You know, I always wonder who was the first person to cut a stone? Like, 
when they saw the stone or a gemstone underground and they mined it, like who thought, oh, we should cut this? I just, I think that's fascinating that we're able to get this from this. So before and after, that's one of my favorite things to look at. Um, even before I was in gemology school, I was always looking at, you know, what, what does a cut ruby look like? What does a rough ruby look like? So I love before and after. I love seeing, you know, a ruby that is set in a ring and then seeing the rough of how it, it comes out of the ground. It still fascinates me no matter how many cut stones and rough stones I've seen that someone actually thought to pull this out of the ground and maybe cut this or, or you know, display it. I, I just think it's fascinating. Um, one of my favorite before and afters that we've ever done was the spodumene video. And I actually left you the link in the description. So if you want to go back and watch that or if you if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's pretty cool. You I think I was a Butterfinger, Butterfinger in that one as well. All right, guys, so let's do a closer look. I'm gonna leave it on the pad today. I don't wanna you know, drop it because sphalerite is so delicate, but I want you to compare and contrast um, the coloring. I think this one is a little bit brighter, possibly because of the cut, and this one looks a little bit darker. We're gonna take a closer look. I want you to compare and contrast the color. This color to me looks way brighter than the rough stones here. Um, I suspect that's because this has been cut, um, but without seeing what's inside, I can't really you know, talk about the crystal. Um, I also want you to look at how small these are and how big this is. I speculate that, you know, this was a, a fraction of what the original rough was. Um, how big? It's hard to tell, but the lapidary sure did a good job. drop anything. We had the rough and the cut sphalerite. Comment below, let me know your favorite gemstone joke. Thankfully, because sphalerite is so delicate, Captain Butterfingers did not show up today. I hope you enjoyed sphalerite as much as I did. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. There was probably a lot more jokes I could have made today, but I held myself back because I don't want to get too pun crazy. 